Hello, my name is Param Chopra. I'm one of the sales engineers here at the US office at SmartBear. I'm here to conduct a whiteboarding session today to talk about shifting left, specifically in context of creating your automated testing framework. So we can describe our automated testing framework in a series of steps. Those, uh, let's say, being uh, the setup uh, of initializing the environment. Uh, from there, uh, we have uh, the act of creation uh, the testing framework and subsequent test cases. Uh, we may want to then analyze our initial testing of said cases, right? Improve them. And that lends itself to the maintenance of our entire framework. And then, of course, after we do all of that, plays right into how we deploy this testing architecture out to meet the needs of production, right? And so what I'm going to do now is to attempt to perhaps compare going through this process using an open source set of tools with you know, perhaps comparing it to a good tool, you know, such as what we can offer here at SmartBear, uh, with the idea of not only saving you time in your implementation of this, but lowering your costs and raising the quality of the code you're testing as well. So you know, if I'm using a manual set of tools to go ahead and conduct my setup, you know, I have to install myself necessary web drivers, libraries, executables, things like that. So that's a manual process, right, as we can see. But with using a good tool, right, you're usually going to get, uh, you know, all the components you need in order to start testing your applications in one nice uh, little installer, one nice little executable, right? So going with a good tool, that's certainly going to be more of an automated procedure. It's only saving some initial time right away in that part of the process. When it comes to creation, you're going to see a lot of time saving, right? Uh, with a manual tool, you're going to have to go ahead and you know, inspect elements manually, recognize uh, your objects manually, right? If you're using an open source tool like Selenium, for example, you have to know exactly uh, what the controls are called you want to, uh, want to access, where they're located. You have to script out the instantiation uh, of, let's say, that control yourself. That takes time, right? That's, again, another manual process. With a good tool, you get a better arrow there. With a good tool, right, um, we can see that uh, a good tool that you might want to use would definitely include uh, perhaps a UI spy to easily, in a visual manner, recognize the controls you want to work with uh, right in your IDE. And it can perhaps also go a step further and create for you uh, and a really ideal application object model, right? And all that is is a series of classes and methods, right, uh, that can go ahead and easily uh, describe your application under test. And what that can do uh, with using the concepts of object-oriented programming is save you a lot of time in creating these test cases, right? Your code can be more readable. Uh, it's more modular, so it's more reusable as well. So users can easily build small pieces of their, of their test components and then build them together in a much quicker fashion than, let's say, building from scratch. So we see a lot of time savings in the creation phase as well with using a good tool. Uh, from there, a tool that you may want to use so certainly have some kind of report, right, or snapshot features. Because the more evidence we can give our developer or test team, the better it is, right? The better, the more equipped they're going to be in order to tackle the problems they'll be dealing with. Uh, but with an open source tool, you may have to, you know, leverage a lot more code uh, or, or perhaps open source tooling to get that same result. Again, that's going to be at a time cost to you. Then from there. Now, the fact that a good tool would definitely provide you not only a way to create your test cases faster, but a way to report on them and assemble them faster, that's going to lead to an overall uh, larger long-term health right, of your testing architecture. It's going to save you a lot of time in having to maintain your application. right? And whereas, again, it would be manual for using an open source tool, right? Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and you know create architecture with a good tool that's certainly going to be uh, more scalable, right, uh, and less brittle as well, right, because our small components we're building out of our application object model are certainly easier to test, right, and less prone to breaking. And from there, we can even update perhaps uh, the object model in, in a faster speed than doing it manually as well, right. Now, finally, with deployment, the nice thing is, is a good tool is certainly going to allow you to deploy your solution, your testing architecture in either a way that is going to best suit your team or in a way that you've already been doing. So a good tool is definitely going to allow you to conduct CI the way you want, right? For example, 
but you can uh, obviously maybe want to launch test cases in a standalone case through a test management solution, things like that. You, know, you want your testing architecture to be flexible in that manner. And so now, if we talk about some of these features, what are the values we can kind of take out from this process? Well, you know, at a overall high level, all parts of this process here are certainly going to save you a lot of, are certainly going to speed up uh, just the amount of time you would spend on implementation of each part of these phases, right? As I pointed out in the micro here. Uh, from there, using an application object model, something like that, the quality of your test scripts and then, you know, subsequent quality of your source code, that's really going to increase as well, right? And then we can also then talk about financial ROI that's going to be gained following a process like this using a good tool. And I'll touch upon one more value at the end. But with this ROI specifically, right, you know, we could look at ROI in terms of, you know, time saved or, or dollar amount saved, right? So, you know, we could say we have time saved right here. And let's say we have cost as well. We could put a little box right there. So with our process versus a manual process, how much time and how much, let's say, money can we save? In, in the time, I think it definitely is pretty clear, right? Especially when we go ahead and uh, to talk about uh, the creation and maintenance phases, right? With a good tool, you're going to save three times the amount of time you would, uh, let's say, implementing your entire testing framework architecture test cases than you would with an open source tool. And then that's going to lend itself very well into the maintenance of your test scripts, right? It's perhaps another three times the amount of time saved, right? So now you're getting six times the amount of time saved using a good tool to implement a shift left type of uh, strategy versus using an open source framework. And then that's going to lend itself into maybe calculating uh, ROI in terms of cost, right? If you're going ahead and let's say, you know, paying your developer, you know, $60 an hour, right? And let's say it takes them, you know, 100 hours to go ahead and you know, implement the solution we see in front of us, you know, then it certainly you know, might cost you about $6,000 right, for this entire implementation. And of course, this is all hypothetical, but imagine this for you know, a larger set of components or applications or tests for a larger team. That cost would certainly balloon. For this example, if we look at the time cost, we can cut our cost uh, you know, by a sixth. Right? So the new cost for the same implementation using a good tool you know, uh, will save us $5,000, right? So it would be $1,000 for the same uh, implementation here instead of 6000 So you can kind of really easily see, you know, how much ROI, again, in terms of that. And then to really maybe bring this uh, at a more high level, this whole process is, is about being agile, right? It's about collaboration. And so all this time-saving, cost-saving quality, it lends them to a workflow that says, hey, I want to be able to collaborate with my team and a good testing tool Right, one that is flexible to use across uh, environments is going to one that's going to foster collaboration between teams as well. Not only from the design phase and creation, but the deployment as well. As you can see, we can get a great ROI from using uh, a good tool, such as what maybe what we could offer, versus using something more in open source. Thank you for uh, viewing this whiteboard session, brought to you by SmartBear.